Hi everyone, it's Scott from Scott Space. I'm here to introduce our episode five of our game mechanics series. Today we're going to cover custom ship design and really it's going to be an intermediate tutorial. For beginners, you may have just gone with the ships that the game provided, you know, the AI provided for you. And, and then, yeah, it's pretty good at picking good designs for you, but definitely get an advantage when you custom design your ships. There's, a, and it, without really max minning, just using a certain combination of weapons and shields and sensors can give you an advantage over your enemies. And it's fun. And... Uh, not too hard to do. So I'm going to cover, you know, pretty much an easy way to do it. I'm not going to go into super detail. I may save that for a, a future video. So let's just jump right in. Now, I've come to a point in game, I think I have three or four colonies here, and I've researched, which I'll put up on the screen here, uh, two important technologies. One is I've got missiles to tier three. Uh, I really like missiles. They uh, will describe a little bit more of them when we get to the design screen, but they uh, are good standoff weapons. And the third tier really is when they start to make a difference in damage and range that I like. So I like to wait till I get to tier three and hopefully survive till then I have in this game. I paid off the pirates early. I really haven't had any combat with any uh, neighboring empires, which has been great for me. And the second most important thing is I researched well, the second level of destroyers. So destroyers, when you first hit destroyers, there's a basic, let's go into the uh, research screen. I'll show you what I mean. <clears throat> I'm going to click on construction here. Okay. So yeah, at tier three here is the basic destroyer, but I went one more. I didn't even bother building those and I got improved destroyers because it gives me really three different hull types. And now that the game an Aurora update better supports having multiple hull designs. Uh, I really look forward to doing this. So I'm going to build, maybe I, normally I would build probably all three of these. I'm going to build two of them. So I'm going to make one my heavy hitter. I'm going to use the heavy destroyer for that. And I'm going to use one to be sort of a flak destroyer. I'm going to give a lot of PD weapons to uh, fight off enemy missiles and fighters. And I'm also going to put a fighter bay on one of them the fast destroyer, uh, sorry, the fleet destroyer, and not the heavy destroyer. I'm going to put all weapons on the heavy destroyer. As I pick these, something you should note here is, and I have a nice table of this in my guide that shows a, a better summary of this for you, but the thing I like about the heavy destroyers here, targeting is plus 10%. So the fleet destroyer has a plus 5%, but the heavy has a plus 10% here, as you can see. So I really like that. <clears throat> it helps my missiles hit better, and I'm also going to use a couple of other components that will help me do that. And the 10% speed boost is across the board here, although fast destroyers get a 20% boost. So I'm going to design a heavy destroyer first, then I'll just uh, design a fleet destroyer and I'll, and I'll take you through that process. The other, oh, the other thing I designed, the other thing I researched was weapons. So here's my tier three missiles. I think they're down here. Yeah, I, I like torpedoes and missiles. Both of them are standoff weapons. Probably research the next missile soon. And what's nice about this, right, is see how it says version two concussion missile here? If you go to advanced, that's version three. Anytime they get an, a version upgrade, you don't have to do anything to the ships. It's kind of like a software upgrade. So I don't have to worry after it is on my ships, just by researching advanced missiles, my missiles will get better instantaneously on all my design ships. Okay, so let's get out of research, go to my design screen. So I'm going to go here to uh, ship construction, and I'm going to hit ship designs. And the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure this is sorted by role here. So I can see I have all my destroyers. Now, these are the improved destroyers, and this is the basic destroyer. I really don't want to deal with this one. In fact, I could even delete it because I don't need it. I'm going to, I'm going to stay with these three. But you might have some in existing already. And uh, you don't want to upgrade them for some reason. There, there could be a reason to keep the lower destroyer, but I'm, I'm not going to do that, so I can delete that one right away. And a little trick here, by the way, if you held Shift and Select, you can do things to multiple designs at the same time. Yeah. So even though I'm probably not going to use the fast destroyer right now, I'm going to use the heavy in the fleet. I am going to go down here, and I'm going to say Mark Selected Hull Manual Upgrade. That's going to change this setting right here to be manual for all three. You can also manually do it here for each one. It's not so hard to do. Okay, so now, <clears throat> when you make a new design, you might think to go and hit Add New, which you can do. 
and then you could select the heavy destroyer here, okay? And you could auto-generate a new design, and that works fine. It's just I'm going to get uh, – I'll have two of those designs. I'll have to obsolete the other one, so I'm not going to do that. And I really don't want to hit manually create a new design because when I do, as you'll see, the entire – ship is empty and you've got to know how to put all of the things from crew systems to reactors to the hyperdrive in here and particularly for a novice user you can see it'll tell you all the things you need over here on the right side i don't want to, have to deal with that right <clears throat> and i also don't want to make a new one and have an extra heavy destroyer and then have to obsolete this one so i'm just going to take the heavy destroyer design that they gave me and i haven't built any of these because i literally just finished this research and I'm going, I could hit edit actually, but I'm going to hit upgrade. Now upgrade is always a great button because it does two things, right? It's going to keep this design. It's not going to add another one to this list. And it's going to automatically upgrade all my components to the latest things. Now I'm going to customize some of the things like weapons, but it will make sure that my armor and my shields and my uh, hyperdrive and my reactor and my crew systems, all those, all that stuff, the fuel tanks, all are upgraded automatically. So by just hitting upgrade, it's going to do a lot of the work for you. And for an intermediate to beginner user, that's all you really need. So I'm going to go Heavy Destroyer. I'm going to hit upgrade. And let's take a look at the design screen here. So all of these white area here, you do not have to worry about. It's going to do everything automatically. Now, if you've researched certain things, like I've researched damage control unit, it's going to add it in. And at basically anything that you, that it puts in here, you're going to want. There's a command center too that I researched because at tier one, you don't have this. It puts in the energy collector, the crew systems, the reactor, the hyperdrive. Everything's done for you, the three fuel cells. The only thing I might do is if I, I might use these empty slots later if I have like extra room in my hull. But Probably not. And the same thing with the engines here. You don't really have to touch them at all, uh, which is great. So I can ignore the white and the yellow. And I really want to scroll down here to the red. And I want to deal with my weapons, my armor, my sensors. And if I want to put a fighter bay in here, which I don't on this particular model, the fighter bay. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually right click and remove all the weapons. And I'll, I'll deal with them later on my own. And I'm going to get rid of the Starfighter Bay, uh, but I'm going to start back at the weapons. I am going to also get rid of the sensor, and so I'll do that now, actually, and the countermeasures, and I'm going to put my own things in. I'm probably going to leave two shields and two armor here. I may add a third one, a third shield. If I have a lot of room left over, I probably won't, but let, let's see what happens. While you're designing and you're adding your own things, one of the most important things to do is look over here for defects, right? So it, you can see here on the upper right-hand corner, it says, military ships must have weapons or fighters. Uh, if you were to take the hyperdrive out, for example, right, if I was to accidentally remove the hyperdrive here, I'll just right click it. Okay, that's a new defect comes up. See, it must have a hyperdrive. So it does walk you through the minimum things you need to have. I'm going to put the hyperdrive back in. But you can see that these defects is the only thing you have to watch for. Now, the other number we're going to look for here is my size. You can ignore pretty much all of this. The crew capacity, that'll take care of itself later. Uh, in fact, it'll come up as a warning if you don't have enough. You know, the maintenance savings is nice, but how much is going to be to maintain the ship and the build cost? All important things, but really the size is everything. So right now I have a 675 worth of slots to put things in and I've used 480, right? So I have, you know, almost 200 here, a little under 200 size components that I can add to everything. And as I do add components, things in this list will change. And if you didn't realize this, there is a scroll bar here, okay? So you see my weapons here says none, my defense, uh, well, that's okay because I already have my shields and armor selected. And you'll see under here for um, some of these things will change as I add sensors. But really you can ignore this side for the most part, particularly when you're a beginning user, and simply just watch for this defects here. And of course the name, we're going to name it later, and this size, right? These are really the only three things I'm going to deal with. There's the hull heavy destroyer. Tells me my little bonus that we talked about earlier. Notice there's no attack strength because I took all my weapons out. So what I want to do is I've researched tier three missiles. So I'm going to go down here to concussion missiles. You can see it's version two. That is the third tier that I showed you in the research screen. And you can see that it's size 38 here. Okay. This WST just means weapons standoff. So in fact, if you look here in the description there, it'll say standoff weapon uh, but the 38 is what's important to me. That's the size. Missiles do take up a lot of, yeah, take up a lot of size on the hull here. 
So, and if you go down to my weapon slots, you can see I have a 120. That's a huge slot. It can hold a much bigger weapon than 38. This is a medium slot. It can hold um, the medium. That's got a 39. This is a large slot. So I can put it in any of these slots that I want. Now, the only thing I don't want to do is I don't want to use this slot right here. And if you look on the model in the middle, it says 270 degrees. That's really important. I want to put my PD weapon there because 270 degree arc gives me a lot more um, ability for my PD weapon to swivel and hit my targets. For the missiles, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to be putting the missiles on these 180s. They're seeking weapons, so they'll find their way out of the ship and shoot. Even if they're shooting from the opposite side, they'll go around the ship and head towards the target. So another thing I love about torpedoes and missiles, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go here to the first bay here. I'm going to I'm going to left click down and it's going to give me a quick choice of everything here. And I'm going to say concussion missile medium. There it is. And I'm going to put another one here and I'm going to put another one here. And as I do, you can see now I'm up to 594 out of 675 for my hull, right? So I've used about 100 there, a little more than 100. There's I'm running out of stuff to put in. I definitely want to put a PD weapon on this 270. So the only one I've researched is the Buckler Repeating Blaster. I like this one because it's cheap and relatively effective. I may upgrade that to a version 2 or 3 in my research. So there it is. And I have room for one more weapon. But before I do that, I want to go and make sure I get all the other stuff I was talking about. So one of the things I like to do is I don't like to do the short-range sensors. There's a cheaper, better variety here called the Trace Scanner. And the Trace Scanner will uh, give you a 5% damage increase. So I'm really trying to make this a heavy hitting ship. It does scan less. You won't be able to jump trace, which means like when a ship jumps away, an enemy ship, you can't see where it's going. But again, if you're defending in a system where you have a spaceport or you have other ships that can uh, do this, that's fine. So for my big heavy hitters here, I just use trace scanners because it gives that nice 5% damage increase. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to pick target tracking. See, that's going to make my missiles hit better, right? So if I hover over here, that's going to add 10% targeting. I already had a 10% targeting from my hull, right? So if I go over here on the right, even though I said you could ignore this, and you go down to sensors here, I think, uh, no, here it is right above it, targeting and countermeasures, you'll see my targeting is up to 35%. So there's some other things affecting this too, right? But there's a 10% from the hull type. There's a 10% from that trace scanner that I just put in. Uh, I'm sorry, 5% from the trace scanner I just put in. Yep, there it is. And then the other things that add to it are the command center here. See, that adds uh, 10% to, uh, oh, from the target tracking here, yeah, targeting 10%, there it is. So all of those things are adding up. That's going to make my missiles much more likely to hit, which is really, really important when I've stacked my ship here with three banks of missiles, okay? So now if you go back up to the top here on the right, I'm up to uh, 619 out of 675. So I actually have a lot left. So I'm going to add a third shield here. By the way, one thing I do want to talk about is these little eyeballs here mean there's an external bay. And if you look here on the right, you'll actually see the things that are visual, right? So for example, this shield right here, even though I have another shield, that shield is visible right there. Uh, and my trace scanner is visible here. My missiles are visible. So if I go over here, you'll see the missile weapons on this side. It, just to show you, if I add the Starfighter Bay back in, you'll see there it is uh, right here. That's a hangar. So you can see um, like little guided lights here. So the fighters will actually come out of there, which is pretty cool. I'm going to turn that off. Now you can see it's gone, right? Not important whether it is visual or not, but that just tells you that it is. And uh, finally, I'm going to add my other shield here. So I'm going to, the shield's more important than the armor, my opinion here, but you want to have both. And uh, in another mechanics video, if I haven't already, we'll talk about that. All right, so now I'm up to 639. I still have some room. So I'm going to go to this small or this medium bay here, and I'm going to put another missile if it fits. Let's see if it does. It doesn't. Okay, I just missed it here, right? So if you go back here, it's 677 over 675. I missed it by two. Uh, and that's really sad. So actually what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take that shield away. Let's see. Yeah, I'm going to be, these are rain, you know, these are um, standoff weapons and I'm going to set the ship to be cautious. So I'm going to hope that these shields are enough for me and I'm going to, I'd rather have the firepower, the extra firepower than the shield, but I've still got some room here, right? So I've still got uh, almost 20, a little under 20 here. 
And there's really not much I can do. You see, the, the Starfighter Bay is going to be too big. You can see it puts it over. Uh, so uh, at this point, I could add an engine, which isn't a bad idea. And let me show you how cool this is for the engine. So you can see there's three engines here. If you add a fourth engine, right, this position here is way off on the left. It would unbalance it. So it actually takes care of that on its own. So if you take a look here, and I put an engine in. Oh, I wanted to put an engine, not a uh, directional thruster. There, I put the engine. Notice how it switched to these four, right? So um, that's really cool how it balances out for you. So now I'm over 677, so that was a bad choice. So I can't do that. So another thing I like to do when I have an extra is I, act, I like to add an extra fuel cell here, okay? So the fuel cell will just give me a little more range. It'll use up some more fuel every time you refuel. And one thing I hate about the design screen here is you see, there's the basic fuel cell. That's one of the earlier techs. I think it was tier one or something. And this is, I think, tier two or three. But, like, why do I have to see this one? So you have to be really careful. It shows all the components here, right? I think, though, that if I filter this, let's see. If I put latest per category, let's see if that fixes that, actually. So I'm going to get rid of this fuel cell and go back in. Yeah, that does. Okay, good, good. So that's a great tip is set that first, and that'll make the fuel cells uh, only show the latest one. Okay, so latest per category here is really, really important to set. That'll help you out tremendously. Okay, you can also limit it, right? I, I say, I only want to see weapons, and that can make it really easy for you too. But latest per category is really, really important, I think. All right, good. So now I'm at 667 out of 675. That ship is pretty full, right? So I've, I've not wasted any space here. By the way, another little tip, although I filled all the weapon bays, it doesn't matter to fill all the weapon bays. It's better to have larger weapons. So for example... In the next tier, there's a large version of the concussion missile. It would be better to have two or three large concussion missiles and four, yeah, medium-sized ones because the way the damage works with shields and armor and how they can they take away some of the damage from it, you always want the highest damage weapons, even if there's less of them. That's much more important. Okay, last thing I want to do is name this. Now, you can name whatever you want. I do like to put DD for destroyer. I do like to put heavy, so I know that was the design. And then you can call it anything you want uh, for the name. Some people just name it DD Heavy, for example, and that's fine too. Now, over here are the tactics. These are the default tactics. You can set the fleet to override these, which I often do. But if you're going to have mixed hulls and you want some ships to be more aggressive and some ships to be more cautious, then you really want to set this. So... These two are really important. I want to set these to cautious, both of these, although the, this one's more important against the stronger targets. All this cautious means is that the ship is going to try to keep its distance. So you'll sometimes see the ships kiting, right? That they're, they're pushing away. Or as they approach the target, they'll turn away from the target and keep a certain distance from the target. And that's because we have longer weapons. These are the longest weapons in the game. And so when you're facing an enemy that may not have missiles, or torpedoes, they'll be at a disadvantage and you'll shoot before they do and you'll try to keep away from their close-in weapons that'll do a lot more damage close up. So the rest of these settings, not so critical. I do like to set engagement to same location. Like if I want the fleet to do something, I'll tell the fleet to do this, but I don't like my ships going off and doing things on their own. But if you're going to build ships that are on auto and leave them on auto, that could be a problem. So these things don't really care. Oh yes, position within fleets, core. So I want to keep these guys in the core. My second ship I'm going to design is going to be a flagship, right? So I'm going to actually put that in close escort, which will be around the core. So I actually want these guys in the center. Later game, when you have carriers or uh, battleships, you may want to put them at the core, and these destroyers might go, for example, in the close escort, okay? All right, and then the last thing is you really want to leave this for default. So this has been added since Aurora, which is really good this latest design for a hull. See, the default used to be this. Well, the only setting was this, which was upgrade to the, any latest design for the roll. So let me just explain really quick what roll and hull is. So roll is the destroyer versus a frigate versus an escort. The hull is the heavy destroyer, the type that we picked, okay? And so the problem in the old game was if you upgraded one of your other destroyers, that was the latest design, and so all of your other hulls would upgrade to that design. And even if you went to a earlier tier destroyer, like the first destroyer that you research, and you upgraded that one, all of your newer ships or your better ships, your improved destroyers, would back 
upgrade or back retrofit to that one. And that was not good. So they've now put this latest design for hull. That's the default and you should use it. The third one would be okay. This is latest design for largest hull for roll. So you might want to use this. So when you're new to, you know, if you get an, another, I think cruisers, for example, have three different levels, right? Advanced or improved or advanced or something like that. And so you may want in the future for these all to upgrade to that role. But again, there's a problem with this. It doesn't work quite the way it's it, they said it does. It doesn't really go for the latest design. It goes for the latest tier, but it picks a certain order for which ones in those tier. So really the only one you want to use is this first one, the default, which is latest design for Hull. But this is new for Aurora, which is really good. It really makes the game playable with multiple Hull designs, which is great. Okay, so I think we're done here. We're going to save and exit. I mean, again, you can review everything here. We, you can see now that we've added weapons. You'll see now I have the uh, range bar here. You can also see this when you're looking at the ship you've built and uh, the defenses and everything else. So you can read about how you've affected the ship here. But really, for intermediate beginner users, this is all good. That's all I really need. And we're going to save and exit. Okay. And there it is. You can see the name changed, right? Because I didn't, otherwise, I'd have a fourth destroyer here, right? A fourth designer that have to obsolete um, one of my the previous heavy destroyer. But because I use the upgrade button, I have my heavy destroyer has been replaced with this DD heavy lancer. Okay. Now I'm going to do really quick on the next one, but just to show you like how you might have two separate hulls, right? So I'm going to take the fleet destroyer. I'm going to upgrade this. Okay. I'm going to name it right away. So I'm going to remember what I'm doing here. So I'm going to call it DD uh, fleet and I'm going to call it flak flagship. Okay. Instead of a name just so I know what I'm doing here. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. Everything everything here, I'm going to remove the weapons here, and I'm going to heavily armor this thing because I'm going to put it in the, you know, on the outside of those other ships in its formation. So I'm going to probably leave three here. I'm going to leave a small fighter bay here. I'm going to leave short sensor array here. So the short sensor, you can see, can have track jumping, and it has a larger range for scanning. So some of my ships will have this, which is great, but the other ones will have the, Trace Scanner, which just gives uh, some damage advantage. So I really like that. And I'm also going to put countermeasures because I'm not going to build a lot of these ships. I'm just going to build some of them, okay? And um, I want them to last longer here. So I'm going to fill this thing with PD, okay? And I'm going to put one there, put one here. And I'm going to give it some offensive weapons too because I'm going to be wasting space otherwise. But I'm going to have three PDs instead of one. And then I'll put two concussion missiles here. Now, some people will say don't use one weapon. That's fine. You might get some advantage from that. Uh, I, I like to use all the same weapons. So I, I researched down the missile uh, tree, and then I might do torpedoes later so I can get the Nova missile, but I'll go down the missile tree, and sometimes late game you'll find technology in some, some uh, derelict ship or something, and some event will give you a later technology. That's fine. But People do recommend that you mix up weapons a little bit. So you could, and the ship is going to be a little closer to everybody else. I could go here. I Luckily, I had gotten this from a from an event, this uh, close-in weapon here. So you could do that, and I could change both of these to that. I think they will fit. Let's see. Maybe not. No, they won't both fit. So I'll go back to the missile. Yeah, and that fits pretty well. And But I'm going to have – I like the ship because it's going to have a little more PD than the others. And I'm going to have the short-range sensor that the other one doesn't have. And it's a little more defensible here. You can see it has an extra shield. Oh, and it's going to have uh, fighters. So fighters, star fighters are really important because they act as PD. And they also do some pretty cool stuff like um, when you're fighting certain creatures, they will distract the creature and the creature will fire on your fighters a lot. They'll go ahead of your ships. So fighters are really good. I haven't spent a lot of technology on them. I haven't gone down the tree very far, but I'm going to put them on here so that some of my ships have fighters, okay? And that's it, I'm gonna, oh yeah, gonna make sure. So here, I'm gonna put neutral, so they're gonna stay at medium range, even though this is a close-in weapon. It's got a range of 1500. Uh, they'll move up until they get into range here, so I'm gonna put neutral here, so they'll be a little closer than putting cautious. I'm gonna do the same thing I like always do here, I like to put nearby or same location. And instead of core here, I'm gonna put close escort. Right, so my other ships are in the core. These are going to be around those ships' close escort, and their flak is going to protect the other ships. And finally, make sure this is set, of course, which it is by default to latest design for hull. 
and we're going to save and exit. Okay. So I'll talk about creating fleets in another video and managing fleets, but you know, just super, super quickly, I'm going to go to my, going to go to my construction yard and one of my systems here, right? And I'm going to just show you that they'll be here. Now notice, be careful, the other designs are still here. I think, oh no, I, I, I think I deleted them. Maybe they're not. Yeah, maybe I did delete. No, there it is. So this was their, this, this uh, Thunder 3 was their design. I'm not going to use that. In fact, I should have obsoleted it there because then it wouldn't show up here, right? So I'll just show you that really quick. So if I go back to ship design, uh, go by roll here, of course. Uh, oh yeah, another thing to do, by the way, is hit just state ships. That's a great way to get this list, particularly late game, uh, a little smaller. So you see the fleet story. If I don't, uh, sorry, the fast story. If I don't want to use this flash, this uh, Thunder 3, I'm just going to turn it to obsolete. Okay, and so now when I close out of here and I go back and I build again, I won't be bothered by that design, right? So my only two designs are going to be this Heavy Destroyer, the Heavy Lancer, and my Flak Fleet Destroyer. Okay? So I'm going to build, let's see, one, two, three, four, maybe five, six. Yeah, I'll build ten of those. And maybe I'll build five of these. Okay? Now there are other ways to build it. There's a um, build order you can do here. And of course, there's the fleet templates you can use. But let me just show you a cool way. If you put all your ships into this queue here for your spaceport, if you go to uh, military ships, and scroll down, all those new ships will be at the bottom and they'll all be red because they haven't been built yet. So as long as you're not building ships anywhere else, you can go over here, click on the bottom one, hold the shift key down, click on the top one and it will select all those ships. And then you can just say, join this to a fleet or create a new fleet. So I'm gonna create a new fleet here called my second fleet. And that will have my heavy destroyers. And if you look at the back here, my fleet destroyers and I'm ready to go. Okay, I hope that gave you a quick, quick overview for basic and intermediate users on ship design. I'll do a more detailed one uh, in a later episode. If you like my video, please like it and hit subscribe. It really helps me to keep making other videos for you. Good hunting.